But the minute I honed in on one specific niche in one specific strategy, that's where I like really started to learn enough for other people to take me seriously. This is the Multifamily Journey Podcast, show 24. You're listening to the Multifamily Journey Podcast. In this show, you'll hear industry experts share tips of success and failure from their real estate investing journeys. You'll get a transparent look behind the curtain while you learn to fulfill the lifestyle you want to live and achieve your wealth goals. Get ready for the journey to financial freedom through investing in multifamily real estate. Here's your host, Blake Daly. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Multifamily Journey Podcast. This is your host, Blake Daly, and got a really special show today. We're breaking down mindset, how to scale to over a thousand units and thinking about even bigger stuff. And it's really, really exciting. I think this is the kind of stuff that everybody needs to hear. And I think you guys are going to like it. So today's guest is Tim Kelly. Tim is part of ADPI, where he's acquired over a thousand units now, and they're working towards 5,000 in the next three years. Um, Tim's also, also the co-author of Military House Hacking, best-selling book that uh, ADPI has published about how to live for free and, and really make money living for free by house hacking with a VA loan, super powerful, powerful strategy we break down. And now he's the uh, vice president of the education arm of ADPI as well. That's active duty, passive income. So a lot of cool things from Tim. And on this show, he breaks down how he got started, right? I mean, he's He's got a higher level now, higher oversight of things with the number of units he has, but talks about how he got started on that first one, how he identified as a multifamily investor and dove in, started making the relationships and built his circle out. And because of that, his network and his access grew. And that's really, he just snowballed that, got in with the ADPI guys and really blew up. So we talk about mindset a lot today and it's timely for me um, because I'm in this mode right now where I'm... I'm stressing my self-talk is is becoming critical. And we talked about that today on the show. Um, I got an eight-unit acquisition and a 66-unit acquisition. They're both coming down to uh, the final weeks here. And just with that, you know, buttoning it up and crossing the T's, dotting the I's, finding money for the eight units still. Um, so yeah, it, it's been fun. And I got to like, I got like three days on the eight unit to decide on um, go or no go. And I definitely don't want to make it a no go because I think it's going to be a, a really good deal. And uh yeah, it's just a matter of of putting all the pieces together. And that's what uh real estate is sometimes just a big puzzle. You gotta find all the right pieces, whether it's the partners or the money or the contractors. And uh on this one got all the pieces but the money. So I gotta figure that out. But that's what uh that's what's fun about it. It's the pursuit of the deal, getting the deal done. It's it's crafting these things. I love it. And uh yeah, we're gonna talk about that and more today with Tim. So with that, let's get in the show. Tim, man, welcome to the show. It's awesome to have you on with that beard. <laughs> What's up, man? You better recognize I'm enjoying this. The Post Skills Bridge beard, man. I love it. Yep. So, man, for those of you, for those that are listening that don't know, why don't you give people a little bit about your background and, you know, how you got started on your real estate journey? Yeah, man. Thanks again uh, for having me on, dude. Appreciate it. Um, I'm situated here in Pensacola, Florida. Not too far from you, Blake. Um, Panhandle so, boys. <laughs> what's that? Panhandle boys. That's right, man. I'm I'm literally I'm literally less than a mile that way is the as the Alabama border. So I'm right on the right on the right on the line between Alabama and Florida, up in the Panhandle, right on the on the Gulf. And so I've been here for about four years. I was stationed here as a chief petty officer in the Navy um, for the last three and a half years or so, and then I just separated. Uh, from the Navy as a senior enlisted leader in November. And that was at my 15 year mark. Um, and the reason I didn't finish up 20 years, most people still look at me like I have two heads and thought I was crazy as a yep. made E seven in nine years. And then just row that out. People think if you're senior enlisted, like you're gonna definitely stay in for 20. Right. And like, no, no matter what. So a lot of people gave me strange looks um, when I got out, but obviously for the last four or five years, just been building my real estate portfolio and building businesses around it. Um, so just, you know, scooping up mostly multifamily and then getting into education and other financial services that are kind of surrounding real estate and still, still looking at taking down, um, mobile home communities, apartment communities, and looking at storage facilities. And so, um, so yeah, man, I mean, I, I sparked, my interest was sparked <clears throat> on a deployment in 2014 when I went out to sea for about nine months. 
I just had a handful of books and in, in, in just the simple topic of like financial management, personal finance. And I was always interested in that. I wasn't, I was never cool with having somebody else, a financial advisor, essentially a, a salesman, a joker broker, take my money and my have my whole financial legacy and they do what they want with it. Right. So I wasn't cool with that for whatever reason. I didn't know anything about it. I just wasn't, just didn't sit right with me. So I'm like, I want to do this myself. And, and I just kept seeing this pattern, the more educated myself on personal finance and building wealth and legacy wealth. I just kept seeing real estate investing. It's for everybody. And too many millionaires and billionaires are created. So just try it. And so I did. And I just went, you know, I got off that deployment, went really headfirst and consumed every ounce of material and education that I could possibly get books, podcasts, meetups, RIAs, conferences. And then I invested a lot of money into um, the real estate education and mentoring. And that really helped me hone my focus a little bit. And that's where I found multifamily. At that point, I was still kind of like going horizontal across all the different strategies and, and, and ways to generate income and, and build wealth in real estate from single family flips to wholesaling, to creative financing, to Burr strategy, small multifamily. And then I came across large multifamily, something just, you know, something was very attractive about that con the concepts. And the more I learned, the more hungry I was. So then at that point, I honed my focus on just large um, multifamily and apartment complexes, mobile home parks. And that's when I was still active duty and I built you know, a portfolio of over a thousand, thousand doors, um, under ownership control that I've helped close, you know, in the last three years, man. And, um, went full cycle on one, just sold, just sold one of those things uh, last month. Um, actually here, not far in, in Mobile, just North of Mobile, Alabama. My first deal yep. was a little 42 unit apartment complex. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah man, I don't know where you want to take this, that man. One, yeah. I, I, I love mindset. Mindset is so huge. Like, just diving into that and growing as a person while you're learning the mechanics of real estate, you have to continue to grow as a human and learn how to add more value to more people. And, and while you pair that with learning the mechanics of real estate and just being able to talk the language and increasing your confidence through education, that is the recipe for success. It truly is. I believe in this industry. Yeah. Dude, that, that, that's good. I'm glad you said that. Cause I want to get into that here in a little bit, but man, a lot of, a lot of stuff to break down. And I think it all starts in like the, the education piece, you figured out what you wanted to do and dove into it head first. And now you guys, it sounds like are are getting close to doing your first deal. <laughs> so no, that's awesome, man. So I, yeah, I think that's really important. Like that you, that when you make the decision, you commit and get into it, you start consuming the podcast and uh, in the books and everything. And that allows you to build the foundation you need to go out and succeed and like take the action, like you're saying. So when you got started, it sounds like <clears throat> you decided a multifamily right away. You did all the education. Like what was it for you that said, all right, multifamily is what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, so like I said, I mean, I spent about 30 grand on real estate mentorship and coaching and education. And so that gave me like a really good understanding of like the nuts and bolts and the how to, and I got a really good idea of all the different ways you can make money in real estate. Um, and then, you know, just through going to conferences and, and talking to people and learning more and more about different asset classes. And clearly I was all about the being able to, to generate pass, passive income and being able to scale it as much as possible. So just building up a portfolio of single family homes wasn't a, didn't make sense to me. And like wholesaling and flipping didn't make sense to me because that's earned income. That's not passive income, right? Yeah. So I, I think what really triggered for me was I stumbled across a book, The ABCs of Real Estate Investing by Ken McElroy. You know, he's yep. rich dad, Robert Kiyosaki's real estate advisor, Ken yeah, McElroy. He's like the real estate guy. <laughs> and dude, he, he wrote the book, The ABCs of Real Estate, super simple concepts. And he literally just broke down a five-step process and how to underwrite and analyze a large multifamily deal. And I'm like, what? It's that easy? What? So then that really got me inspired. And I kind of just, that's when I focused on multifamily. And I didn't really get much traction because I was trying to do too many things at once. But the minute I honed in on one specific niche in one specific strategy, that's where I like really started to learn enough for other people to take me seriously. Um, because that with education comes confidence. You have to educate yourself. You have to go through some academies, some courses, invest in yourself, invest in your education, and then get out there while you're learning. Network with other people who are in the industry, both potential partners and maybe investors and like brokers and lenders and people like that. But no one's going to take you seriously unless you until you have the education. And right now, it's just there's just a freaking black hole 
and and whirlwind of gurus and educators out there. So clearly, um, you have a lot of options, um, and you shouldn't be paying 20, 30, 40, 50 grand for, for these courses and masterminds and coaching and, and stuff like that. Like I actually pay on an annual basis for introductory real estate to get all the nuts and bolts, even in multifamily, you shouldn't be paying that much. Right. So, um, obviously we created programs and stuff inside of active duty, passive income to where we're, you're paying a fraction of that price to, to get higher value. So, yeah, and I think that's a really good point because that that's like the first step. A lot of people take is just dump money into education, expect to get something out of it without the action. But there's like, like you're saying, they're, they're super affordable options to get into this. I mean, like bigger pockets has a ton of free resources. Like my website, your ha- website have free resources that give a good baseline um, and allow you to, to do it. Dim- Tim did and, you know, find your niche from that and then dig in. I mean, Google is an amazing thing, like what you can find on there and, and it's pretty cheap. So I, I think that's good stuff. And, and for you, this led into like the action piece of it. And I think this is really good because I don't know how deep we've dug into this in the show specifically, um, more so in like with going after brokers and not being taken seriously in the first place. But how did you just like translate that education into confidence and be able to go out and start to make those relationships and say, hey, I, Mr. Broker, I'm a multifamily investor, like take me serious. Yeah, no, that's, that's just such a good question. I think so many people, that's probably one of the biggest challenges that I think um, people yeah, have. I've seen it a lot too. Yeah. Especially Dude, being, like being they, younger they're, too. they're trying to figure out how to, how to do that. So number one, you have to be bold enough to say not only, wow, real estate investing is, is pretty cool. And I believe real estate investing can take me to my goals of financial freedom. It's just one vehicle that could take you to financial freedom. So if you believe that with conviction, the next thing is to convince yourself that you can do it and actually start seeing it happen within the next six months, 12 months, 24 months. Like you have to be able to believe that you can make it happen, that you have, even with no education, I think I could do that. And whether that's hearing this podcast and knowing that, look, you, if you're listening, you can do this. You just have to convince yourself that you can, and you're going to be the only one to stop you. So if you, Know yourself that real estate is something that could help you achieve your goals, is a vehicle that could take you to your financial freedom goals. And you believe that you can and you could see it deep down. It's just a matter of time until you have a certain level of education to where you're like, cool, now I can go make phone calls to brokers without sounding like an idiot. Yeah. Uh, but at the same just, time, the lingo is a big part of it. Like you have to be able to speak their language. Like you can't, you know, go in talking yeah. Chinese and expect to get a good response if they don't speak that language or, you know, whatever it is. And there's definitely a language to multifamily. I mean, it's NOI, um, you know, all these things, cap rates. Like if you don't know those basic things and you call a, a broker, it's going to, the conversation might not go too well. Dude, no, 100%. And, and you also have to be content with knowing the first broker I talked to maybe the first five or 10, the first investor that I talk to, or the first five or 10, the first, you know, potential partner that I have a conversation with, or the next five, you, you're probably not going to know what you're talking about. Like you have to be content with rejection, a lot of rejection and a lot of no's in the very beginning. You just have to be content with that. It's part of the process. It's part of success. Just like failure is are, those are the stepping stones to success. Failure should not be burdens that are preventing you from succeeding. These, these, these struggles and failures and challenges are part of the process. You just have to keep going, right? Yeah. So believing that, that real estate can do it, that could take you to financial freedom, knowing deep down that you can, and then being content with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw this up. I'm going to pick up a phone. I'm going to try to tell my broker, this broker, dude, my elevator pitch that maybe I learned. Uh, you know, I don't really know yet. I don't have it memorized. I have it <laughs> you don't even have it down yet. You just have what somebody right? touched. Yeah. And you, you have this script written down. You have these questions written down. You try to have it structured. And then you realize you have to phone call. The most important thing is to get to know them as a human being, right? Not worried about a script, not worried about them taking you seriously. Get to know them and be genuinely interested with everybody that you speak to in this industry and try to try to create a partnership over yeah. that phone call, right? Yep. If you go into yes. every phone call, as a you're trying to form a business long term, long term sustainable, you know, uh, symbiotic relationship. It's you're gonna have a hard time finding people that are like minded and like hearted. But when you do, it's like that's worth every ounce that you put into it, um, because that's what re- like success in this business is all about. The people that are in your circle that people who know you and, and the people that trust you and like you and your reputation and your personal brand and business. 
Um, so all that stuff's super important, man, when you're first getting started. Yeah. R- right there, just at the end, like it, you said, this business is all about your circle, your reputation, the people, all of that. And the more you can build that, the better, the better it is. And I resonate so well with what you're just saying about like, you start with the script I've done. I held, I think at one point I literally held up like the multifamily book, maybe it was Joe Farrell's book or whatever. And I was like going off of that and just very, <laughs> you know, very structured, very rigid. You can tell, like, I know that broker on the other end of the phone was like, what is this kid doing? Yeah, man. Um, but then like, you start talking, like you find commonalities, like turns out one of them was um, prior Air Force, another one's prior Army, and then you then you rely on that. You know, talk about you know their old experiences, and it just it's build a relationship. It really is. It's not just calling them up and saying, "Hey, give me deals." So yeah, that that's really good. No, I mean that, that's super important. Too many people like just don't have the patience and understanding that when you're when you're talking on the phone with these guys you know, the brokers are absolutely qualifying you as, as an investor, right? And they're probably going to send you some crappy deals that don't meet your criteria for the first couple of times that they send them to. But it's important, A, to figure out what their goals are as a broker and what they, like means what means most to them about what they do and what do they really want to achieve and are they interested in investing? Have they ever invested in a deal? Would they be willing to invest some or all of their commission into the deal? That's re- actually a really good way to figure out if a broker who brings you a deal actually believes in the deal. Well, would you be willing to invest your commission into this deal? Right. Yeah. And you'll, you'll hear both like of them be like, well, uh, I don't, I don't know about that. You know, be like, Oh, well, well, maybe I shouldn't do this deal then, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's a good way to confuse a broker and really f- to see like if they're genuine individuals. Yeah. You know, they're they're honest. yeah. Um, but you have to go into each phone call and, you know, in, in a long-term relationship mindset, like I want to build a partnership with you. This probably won't work out, but I'm going to give it my all. And I want to, you know, give you my heart and I'll, you know, we're going to, we're going to try to work this out. Um, and, and, but too many people are just trying to like literally pick up the phone and be like, Hey, my name is this. I'm an investor. I, these, this is my, this is my criteria. Nah, man, no one's going to take you seriously. You have to just yeah. be a human. The thing is they probably get, you know, 20 calls like that a week. So, you know, yeah. differentiate, differentiate, <laughs> differentiate yourself. Yeah. And I'm just going to leave that in there. Don't, You're good. Yo, mean, please do. No. Please do. Man, that's the realness of recording a podcast at 722 p.m. on a late day. You uh, right. d- 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 differentiate yourself pretty good. Um, man, so when you started doing this, when you were calling brokers, um, talk us about, through how you got into your first deal? Like how did those relationships lead you to, to getting into the game? Yeah, that's a good question. So, I mean, it really is like, because I was so educated and so focused on, on multifamily. And so I knew how to talk the talk. I was able to, to talk about commercial financing and debt service coverage ratio and cap rates and NOI and why we're choosing a market and the factors, you know, how to analyze a market and how to add value to the deal and, and, you know, cost for rehab. Like you have to be able to talk these just, and there's basic terms that anybody can learn, very simple stuff and very simple concepts that anybody can learn. So understanding um, that you have to, like I went before, like if you, A, know that real estate could take you to your goals and B, you can convince yourself that you can do it. Like you actually believe in your heart that you can make this happen. You have to be able to convince yourself, I am a fill in the blank, a multifamily investor. I am a syndicator. You know, my partners and I invest in and syndicate large multifamily deals, blah, blah, blah. But you have to believe, you have to like believe that, like deep down, you have to convince yourself that is who you are. That is what you do. Like first and foremost, because when you're going to talk to brokers and investors or you're speaking to somebody if they don't feel like you have that confidence, they're never going to take you seriously. Right. So I just had like, without even any experience and like maybe just a little bit of knowledge from books and podcasts and networking, I was able to talk to brokers and convince them that I knew what the heck I was talking about and that what I was doing and that we had the capacity to close. And that's just because I called a bunch of brokers. I went through a bunch of partners. I went to the meeting, the RIA meetings in the area. The minute I got to this area, that very same month, I went to the RIA meeting. From that point forward, I identified and labeled myself as the multifamily investor in the Pensacola area, period. Like, I didn't even know anybody because I was brand new to the freaking area. I was here for less than a month. But I am the guy new to town. I invest in multifamily real estate. And because of that, I went up and like in our RIA, you know, the professional investors guild, they give you an opportunity to literally go up to the front of the room and pitch. They literally live, let you go give a 30 second commercial every month. That's just what I did. I was consistent with yep. that. 
most of the, some of the same people were sitting there every single month, but good because then they really is embedded into their head. Who is the guy? Who is the yeah, team? It hits the home with him and builds your brand with that right? audience. Yeah. And that's it. So there's new people every time that are meeting me, who we are. And then, and then that, like, it didn't take long within that first month, I was connected with the doers that were already doing deals in the Pensacola market. And that's when I connected with them and I was able to have the broker relationship. I brought the deals in, raised some of the capital, put some of my own money in. And then I partnered with guys who already had closed, who already had some capital raised and uh, who had some of the like lender relationships and stuff. Um, So that's kind of like working up. That's what I did. I was just educated the crap out of myself, consumed every little bit of peas, networked with people and just was relentless and persistent. I labeled myself with bold conviction. I am a real estate investor. And if you can't do that, you got to make that happen for You got to believe you, this is what you do. This is who you are. And then let people know that's what you are and get excited when you talk about deals. And when you talk about the fact that you could offer investors, double digit returns, plus tax benefits, plus cash flow, you know, plus ownership, right? And yeah. when you have that passion and you, you believe it in yourself, people feel your energy and people want to get involved. So yeah. um, that's what for me. Like, where can I sign up right now? I want to invest in some of this multifamily. Exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome, man. But I'm, I'm right there with you. I think I'm so on board with all that. Cause I did the same thing. Start with the, the RIA meetups and to get into those groups and get around those people to find your partners, to create those relationships. I mean, invaluable. I mean, you probably wouldn't be here without those. I mean, it's just like what you're talking about, building a circle, building the circle, building the circle and growing it. And that's how it all starts. So that's how you got, you got into the first deal, started operating that and that these relationships are growing. So where do you guys go from there? Yeah. I mean, we, we um, took down, it was a 42 unit. Uh, meanwhile, like, you know, six months before that, I, I just had gotten to Pensacola and that first month, I closed on a fourplex actually using a 203k FHA loan because I was all about the house hacking strategy and oh, yeah. the, the intent was to move into one unit and rent out the other three. Um, so I, I closed on that and I was self-managing and new to the area. I didn't really know too many people, but I got orders to Pensacola nine months before that. So I built relationships with people via online platforms and stuff. And so that I already kind of had a small network of people established before I even got to Pensacola. That's why I was able to close a fourplex that first month. And then six months later, close that 42 unit. And so as we were kind of getting traction, that that right there was in, in the, uh, in the economy and in, especially in the sector of commercial real estate uh, cap rates started slowly to go down. And like the return on investments was going down in apartments. I'm like, Hmm, what's this mobile home park thing that I keep hearing about? And that was about three years ago. And that's what kind of sparked the interest to mobile home parks. And I completely just got distracted. I I stopped looking at, at apartments and all I did was focus on mobile home parks because I already had like that apartment. I already kind of had that concept. I had partners who were, we were still looking at deals, but then mobile home parks were really fascinating because at that time you can get double digit returns on mobile home park, you know, double digit cap rates on mobile home parks in a lot of markets um, where at, at that time apartments that was like, you may get an eight cap, nine caps are crazy. Probably a D, you know, D class and you're in the hood if you're, if you're near 10 cap. Um, so then we started going after mobile home parks with a different partnership. Um, so scooped up a bunch of those all over the Southeast and Midwest. And, um, and now that's, that's kind of where we got. We just kept continued to do the apartments and mobile home parks. That's um, awesome, man. And where did ADPI come in? Is, did this develop during this time period or did you start out with, with ADPI? Like how's that fit into the story? Yeah, good question. So after that 42 unit closed, um, we like had the opportunity, my, my partner and I, Jay, we had the opportunity to share our story on the bigger pockets podcast. And so, you know, you're on the bigger pockets podcast, you get a lot of exposure and, there's a lot of um, a lot of people who hear you on the Bigger Pockets podcast, then just want to interview you and want to talk to you and want to call you and want to offer you money and want to learn from you. So because, especially because I gave out my cell phone number on the podcast, I had a bunch of people call me and text me and stuff, which was great. One of those phone calls was the initial co-founder of Active Duty Passive Income, Eric Upchurch, and so he heard me on the podcast, immediately called me. Like since that day, they basically asked me to join the team because we just immediately hit it off. And so that was about three years ago. Um, 
And at that time, I still had other partnerships. We were still doing other deals. And everybody else that were, were the founders of you have ADP out of the core five guys, we were all doing our own thing in real estate. You know, and then like fast forward a year, we all realized like, we are a partnership that we needed and we were looking for. Then that's when we started buying deals together. Um, like that, the ADPI kind of core. Is that where like the the real big time growth came from? Was when the five of you guys and active duty passive income ADPI started buying the deals together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when our like our acquisitions team for a while we called it ADPI Capital, but we're kind of putting that name aside because that's going to be for a, a long term, more visionary project um, that that we have like a Reg A fund. We want to offer service members who go through boot camp either A the TSP or B real estate with ADPI Capital. Like a, we want to be able to give them that opportunity to get you know actually cash flow investing cash flowing assets. In you know, for their retirement instead like of their dumping TSP into the, right off the bat, instead of dumping into TSP. So that's yeah. kind of, but we are still buying deals. And yeah, you're right. We started buying deals, but we were so focused on this platform and education. And we had this podcast and this best selling book and this, this, this Facebook group and this course, like all kind of as one. And then we just kept adding more value to it. Then we started a whole multifamily and commercial thing because that's all I focused on. And, and now it's just blossoming this and this like just ridiculous platform and community and movement uh, of military real estate investors who are a either trying to figure out how to get their credit right and get their financial foundation established to being smart with your VA loan to buying a hundred units while you're active duty stationed in Japan. Like whatever you do and everything the whole, in between the whole game right there. Dude, we have resources investing. and education. A lot of stuff is free. Um, obviously we have coaching and masterminds and stuff like that. And we also have the financial services because there's too many lenders and insurance companies that are taking advantage of, of vets, man. So we create our own mortgage branch and our own insurance brokerage to help serve the vets better um, that are in our community. So um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty sweet community that we got, man. It's very humbling to see how much it's grown over, over time. Yeah. I mean, we had, we had Grant Cardone and on our podcast, Robert Kiyosaki on our podcast, Garrett Sutton and, you know, Jocko, all these awesome people, but it's even more inspiring to kind of interview the, you know, the E ones and E fives and yeah, who, who are doing a big, like so, so early. That's yeah, awesome. dude. It's uh, it's just awesome. And it's super exciting. And, yeah, and the so. future, the future Grant Cardone's. Yeah. So it sounds like really, you know, coming together under that shared vision um, of fostering this military community of real estate investors that are out to get financial freedom is what ultimately took you guys from, you know, I bought a multifamily deal to we buy multifamily deals. We teach others how to do it. And all this, you know, all the auxiliary businesses pointed back towards, towards helping people. Is that kind of how it happened? Just like building on top of what's there? Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just passionate about helping other military members do what we were doing because we were getting traction and we were finding success and we were just giving back. You know, we have a best selling book that's free on a website called Military House Hacking. For a lot of people, that's where it all starts. It's like that mindset of, I didn't know I could do this with my VA loan. I didn't know that I could buy a four unit property with my VA loan with zero percent down. Yeah. Right? You can just like those negotiate closing costs and get a free house that cash flows. It's awesome, bro. I mean, I'm telling you, it's just this knowledge. And just, number one is the awareness. Too many vets, you know, it's like some crazy, like 85% of vets never even use their VA loan. You know, most of them don't even know they have it available to them. Um, but the ones that are taking advantage of it are, 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 are legally smartly building wealth through their using their VA loan and, and the house hacking strategy um, bouncing from, from duty station to duty station, especially if they're tapping into like, you know, their own education and they're learning how to really build assets and build a portfolio. Um, while you're active duty, man, you could easily become a millionaire. And then when you leave, um, you'll be set up with streams of income where you don't have to ever get another job. Um, whether you want to do the 20 or leave at 15, like me, or even in at 10. I mean, if you start early enough, man, it, it will only take a few years to build like a really good, cash flow machine where you could just, you know, just yep. walk right out of the military at whatever, you know, time you, whatever, whenever you can. Yeah. yeah I, I say that all the time. Like the, the VA loan is the most powerful loan product in the world, man. And I wish more people knew about it. And I think it goes back to the whole financial education system. Like why more people don't invest in real estate is kind of the same reason more people don't use their VA loan is because they don't even know about the power of real estate. So, I mean, I guess the question I have to you, like what, what have you seen work that's helped really educate people just, you know, veteran or otherwise, um, because, you know, a lot of people listen to this, this podcast aren't in the military, um, though, though we both have that background. Like, how do you even like 
begin to teach somebody like, Hey, real estate, you know, you can get double digit returns, beat the stock market, be safer, you know, and have all these other benefits like depreciation and, and monthly yeah. income. There is no better asset class for building wealth than real estate. And in most instances, people don't have the time or energy to invest in it on their own. So how do you build wealth with real estate when you lack the time and energy? Leave that to the Growth View properties. The Growth View team finds, negotiates, and manages multifamily assets for private investors. Their mission is to help investors secure the ultimate asset, which is time, all the while impacting the greater good with their endowment fund that fuels the mission of charitable organizations. Find out more by going to thegrowthview.com. That's view with a V-U-E dot com. Put your money to work so you don't have to at thegrowthview.com. I mean, here my thought. That's like a super loaded question, and, and this is why because of how we're programmed growing up, and uh, in our society, like we are literally programmed like robots. Um, sit in front of you know a teacher. Don't say anything. Don't respond. Just listen. Um, listen to a lecture. Learn about all these different certain things that won't ever apply in life. You'll get graded on that, and if you don't get good grades, then you're never going to be successful. And in order to be successful, you need to go to college and go into all kinds of debt and just do what you're told and then get a job and work for somebody else and follow the rules. Right. And if you don't do that, it just you're seems a not true when you say it like that, but that's how it is. Right. Like how, Dude. when you listen to that, how stupid, like how crazy does that sound? Like, no, it's not life, but like <laughs> it kind of is, you know, we are, pro we are programmed to, to abide by policy, follow instructions, follow the government, follow corporations and allow other people, the capitalists like, like us to control the time of their employees. So like most people think you just it, being an employee is like, is it, but like, let's try to be the best employee that we possibly can. And that usually includes going into the most amount of debt for student loans and then working so many years to try to earn a high income to pay off those loans while you're trying to start a family, while you're trying to travel the world and enjoy your youth, but it's not possible. So there, there has to be a certain reason why someone is willing to look beyond all that chaotic nonsense, right? That rat race. So for some, some either in with them or a parent or a guardian or a mentor or somebody in their life came by and gave them that idea, like you don't have to be a, a W2 employee in the rat, right? The nine to five rat race your whole life. There's other things out there that you could achieve. So yeah, that, that already separates the masses, like remove, like, 80% of people because that many people, the masses will never, ever, ever think outside the box and think through the noise and this whirlwind, yeah. right? So, but like there has to be a, an inherent curiosity. I think that too, like there has to be curiosity. Like I wonder why, you know, but some people say buying a house is an asset and others say it's not an asset. Like you have to have the, enough curiosity and then enough motivation to actually go investigate. Like you have to be a self-starter. You have to be interested enough to like learn and be willing to learn more and do more than going to your nine to five job, doing as little as possible, going home and screwing off and Netflix and shit. Like you have to want more. You have to be willing to put more in. You have to be willing to sacrifice. So again, that separates so many people. Like yeah, that removes yeah. so many people of the, the mainly the masses, right? That are following this, this yeah. freaking just, you know, we, we are just so conforming. You know, there's so many people that are just are conforming. But I know now more than ever, there's more newer millennials that are coming in in their early 20s, late 20s, early 30s that don't believe all that bull crap and that are becoming entrepreneurs that are creating side hustles and creating their own bank and their own economy. And it's pretty exciting to watch, man. I think we're going in a great direction, but there's always going to be people who are stuck in that rat race. Um, and we need, we need educators. We need employees. We need those people um, for sure. But it's still, I don't know, man, if that answers your question or not, there's just, I think our biggest, oh, yeah, that was, that was good. I, I mean, just where we took it, it was, was really good. I think it, it comes back to, the mindset and the realization of your circumstances, right? Like for me, <laughs> this is just like super simple, but I used to hate just like that. I had to raise my hand to go to the bathroom. Like I'm sitting here like pinching my legs. Like I just need to go pee and you won't let me. <laughs> it's something simple. And you're sitting in this construct and getting taught things that, um, you know, don't apply. And I don't know, just, yeah, little, little side conversation. I think, you know, the a lot of it, people, dude, a lot of it, a lot of it too, is how uncomfortable you are with your current day-to-day -day grind. Like if you are in a very comfortable situation, let's say you have a W2 job where you got to work like 70, 80 hours a week, but you're making like a million bucks a year. 
Like there's a lot of people, most people would not give that up. They'd be willing to sacrifice time away from their family, sacrifice their health, their time, whatever, just because they're making a high salary. But even some people that are making like 50,000 a year in a job they hate, they might be comfortable, right? Yeah. Most people are afraid and would never want to break out of their comfort zone because they're afraid of change and they have a fear of failure and a fear of change and fear of the unknown. Yeah. Um, and so that's, and I, I don't thing. know about you, but like, for me, it's like that fear, that fear to be like, that is what motivates me to do more is like what motivates me to be a driver, what motivate motivates me to like go underwrite deals and find deals because I, you know, to keep building passive income. Cause I don't want to be stuck in that position. I don't want to have to be away from my family. If I don't want to, I, I don't want to be stuck to a location. If I don't want to be, um, j- just like the freedom of movement and lifestyle and, I, mean, I think you're you're the same way and want to provide that to others. So I think, man, it's just, it's just powerful. I'm I'm glad yeah. we got into that because it's a little, no, it's it's, it's so it's, dude, it's so true. Like, there's so much out there to to obtain and achieve. Like the sky, the, absolutely the sky's the limit. But like thinking about your daily habits every day, um, are they helping you or hurt it? Like, do you have goals? Do you have do you actually have a goal in place for the next year for the next ninety days? Okay, well, do you have those goals written down? Do you have a system in place to track? the metrics of those goals and even accountability group or tribe or person or mastermind every week or multiple times a week that is holding you accountable to achieve those goals. Like if you're not willing to, to establish goals, track them and measure them and then have an accountability system in place, you don't deserve to achieve those goals. Right. And so like that, that's mm-hmm. another thing. Do you actually have right goals? If you have people. the goals and you have all these things and you're willing to achieve them and you're putting the time in, it's just a matter of time, but who then, who are you really associating yourself with? Are those people holding you back or helping you move forward? And most of the people in our W2 jobs in the military, not even our families, they're actually, they're actually anchors that are holding us down inevitably. And we don't even realize it just because of the way they think. And they're not willing to do those things that we're willing to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so true. Like you are the average of the five people you hang around. You probably hear that quote, but I mean, seriously, look at the people you hang around. And for me, and you're probably the same way, like most of the people I hang around are like real estate investors, have passive income. And that's what we talk about. And then that's like what we hold each other to. Like, hey, dude, did you offer on that property? Like, oh, you did? Awesome. So what are, what are some things that, that you do? Like, how do you keep track of your goals? Like, what do you write down? What do you pursue? Um, and then how do you go about like maintaining accountability for those? I think that'd be good for, for people to hear, you know, something yeah, actionable. Man. No, I mean, this is definitely a plug, you know, me and Kevin Brenner, the podcast, I was recently um, uh, uh, just put out this 13 week journal. It's an action journal. It's like a 90 day action takers quest really um, to That's establish the, uh, your the goal. Journal. Yeah, exactly. The intentions are the same thing, dude. It's, it's just a, ni- a 90 day time frame is a really, really, really good time frame because a year, sometimes it's not you won't be as motivated to take advantage and really take action if you have a 12 month goal. But if you reverse engineer it and break it up into quarters and or 13 weeks, like the military likes to call it, then um, it's easier to obtain. And then you could establish your goals like it literally every day. And in that, in the journal, there's a morning routine block that kind of helps you get with your morning routine, kind of like the miracle morning. It helps you visualize and and scribe and, and journal and think about practicing gratitude and it gives you all this guided kind of this guided journey of, of how to achieve your goals. Um, so that is just something I use to just establish both, you know, personal, professional, spiritual, and then either like contribution and, and, and uh, like philanthropic and then family. And so like, there's all these, there's all these pillars and you got to have like, you know, 12 month goals for each one of those things and reverse engineer. What do I need to do this quarter in the next 90 days? to, to make sure I'm going to achieve those goals. And I do that through accountability groups. You know, I'm in a couple of different masterminds. Um, one of them, you know, we meet, we meet weekly. We, we have pot, pods of guys, you know, four, four guys that I've been meeting every single week with for, for a while now, um, amongst like a larger mastermind that we meet multiple times a year and, and in person and do trips. Um, but having those people who are also millionaires, who are also want to change the world, who are also giving and getting around grab people. life big, like, yeah, getting around the right kind of people, dude. Yeah. Being around the right people. So you got to just, because every single day, like, like staying inside your own head, Oh man, I don't think, well, am I ever going to be able to do this? Or you dude? We, we have so many limiting beliefs and it's so important to continue to pay attention to what you're, what you're saying in your own head. Right. And, and what you're saying to yourself, your self-talk. 
Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think that's so true because the days I like through like self-reflection, the days I find myself having, you know, poor, poor performance or bad days, I'm just not feeling right. It's usually, I find myself like having negative self self-talk, like, Oh, you didn't do good enough. Like you should have done this. Like we're, we're behind here. And this is like the internal dialogue and it just, it brings you down. So like, that's one thing that I've tried to make an emphasis on. And some of it's affirmation, some of it's journaling, but most of the time it's just like, man, staying positive. Like you got these big goals. Like don't let these little setbacks get in your way. Like this is why we have these journals and, and we write them out. I literally write mine down every day, every morning I wake up as part of my morning routine. Like what am I focusing on? What's my port, most important next step today to accomplish this goal. That's 12, 13 weeks in the future. And so many times I catch myself, I'm like, all right, you know, I got to tell myself like, Blake, get back on track, get back on track. The day's not over. You got, you got stuff you can still achieve today. So that's all really good stuff, man. The mindset, like what you bring to mindset, I think is if, if nobody heard, if people just didn't hear anything else in this episode, that could be a huge takeaway that could help in anything in life, whether that's you succeeding in your career, you buying more properties, you getting financially free, like that mindset in the action you take towards fostering that is so important. No, I mean, the, 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 like, like really is the most important thing you could do is pay attention to how you're speaking to yourself and the self-talk that you have. Um, because w- whatever you're saying in your head is going to turn into your actual, your thoughts and then your body uh, language and your behavior and your energy that you're going to give off is going to be the negative and you're going to convey negative energy to people. And guess what happens when you have a negative attitude and you convey negative energy? Obviously, negative things yeah, happen to you. Yeah. Right. And my wife's so always the first one to catch it too. Like she'll if you're be paying attention one. to what you're saying, no problem. I got this cool. I struggled. I'm failing. It's part of success. I'm actually on the right track. I just got to keep going. Waking up every single morning with an attitude of gratitude will change your life. If you do that one thing right in the morning, before you pick up your freaking phone, before you think about anything else, lay in bed, before you get out and, 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 and actually start your day, what am I thankful for right now? At least list three to five things every single day in the morning. First, you, when you wake up and then you'll have positive self-talk throughout the day and you'll realize there's so much to be grateful for and so much to be thankful for. Even though you have nowhere come nowhere near your goals. Like I believe I'm in the infancy stages of creating what I plan on creating, not only in ADPI, but with my family. And so understanding you have so long to go, but this is a journey. This is just, you know, this is something every day you're going to continue growing and you're going to get better and better and better every day. And the better you become and the more, the more value you're able to bring to other people is what you will be reimbursed with in payment and income and abundance. So get better every single day just for the simple fact that you could add more value to more people. So then you could have more abundance come yeah. back at you. Yeah. Be a go-giver. Be a go-giver. That's a great awesome. book, man. It's yeah. definitely one of my top reads, dude. Love that book. Man, that stuff gets me, that stuff gets me going. Like it's not, it's not real estate specific, but I hear it in this space over and over again with the people that have made the commitment, the success they've had because of how they align their, their actions with their goals, with their mindset, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's really any entrepreneurial venture. And that's really what, what you're doing is more as much entrepreneurship as it is, you know, pure real estate. And there, there's common threads of success. And that's what getting around the right people, you figure out, you find these things, you, you find those, you know, those right puzzle pieces to put in, into place in your own life. And then you got this big picture of, you know, of progress of success. So yeah. this stuff is awesome, man. I, I hope everybody yeah. is getting something from this. Cause I think that value is yeah. huge value. Super <clears throat> huge. So, you know, for you guys going forward, I mean, it sounds like you, you've got a really clear vision. The values are there. What's the future look like for you guys? Like what areas are you focusing on? Uh, I'll break it up into like multi-step questions. I want to see where you guys are headed first. Yeah. 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 Um, so are you talking uh, specifically like ADPI as like an education company or what do you like, who is the, uh, the question directed at specifically? Yeah. Like where, where's ADPI headed? Where's the, uh, the multifamily investing headed? Like what's next uh, for you guys? I know you got some, some big lofty goals. Yeah, no, I, I mean, there's so much happening. And right now, like we have very, very um, powerful connections and relationships that we're creating like key strategic partnerships um, that are going to just completely be game changing um, with, with, you know, in a lot of different ways, but me personally, as the VP of education, 
All I care about is to make sure that every single one of our education products is the best education, the most high, uh, you know, the most state of the art, the most relevant, uh, the most modern education across the board for everything. So, like I said, we just revamped um, our flagship course, the Military Real Estate Investing Academy. It's just soup to nuts, gives you everything you would ever need to know about how to invest in, in, in real estate from a single family residential standpoint. And that's everything <clears throat> from the basics and terminology to the mindset and legal protection, asset protection, insurance, all these things. Um, so we just released that. That's that's an amazing course, like 80 plus lessons from all the leaders in the ADPI team contributed to this and made lessons. So that's at a super high value um, offer right now that we have. But the Military Multifamily Academy and Mastermind is what I spend, you know, most of my time um, on. And that's just a very robust uh, academy and a course for all things multifamily um, and all the tools and resources. But then our Mastermind is is growing very, very, very rapidly uh, because there's people that are in this Mastermind that are doing deals. They're using this platform to partner. They're using our platform to catapult their personal brand, to take lead, to do things inside of our inside of our community uh, to demonstrate that they are somebody that you want to do business with, right? And so that's what we're doing. We're just giving them the tools, the resources, the guidance, the mentorship. And we're now creating this elite group inside of our high-level Mastermind to have more exclusive one-on-one time, the people who are, you know, are doing deals, who are putting more time into the mastermind and who are highest top tier students, we're creating a next level for them where we're going to give them, you know, more of our personal one-on-one time, more one-on-one coaching um, and more exclusive time, time to really help them get to the next level in their business and with their personal brand and their investing. Um, so we're, I, I'm super excited about that. That's probably going to be within the first quarter of this year. I love it, man. Yeah, that's really good. And just on the investing side, like for those listening, maybe they can get a little insight from this, but um, what areas are you focusing on? Like what kind of trends are you looking like investing uh, going forward in 2021? Yeah, um, we, you know, we have, uh, well, not as of today, but we just, we had a phone call today. So we should have two deals under contract here um, within this, you know, this month, both in Indianapolis, both uh, large apartment complexes, and, um, and so we're looking forward to seven, getting- that's the homeland, nothing but, uh, farms and uh, bean fields and corn fields out there. <laughs> Man, dude, Indianapolis is yeah, no, it's, it's a good for a while. Like mm-hmm. we, we've been investing there for a few years and we're excited about it. We have a really, really good asset management team that just makes it so passive for us. They just, they're the, we believe they're the best asset managers in, in, um, in the Indianapolis area. And so, but it's got even better. Like so many people are going to Indy and it's just such a great place. There's so much economy, so much growth, so much, um, you know, there's a great traject- trajectory in their, in their um, you know, it's just the, the path of progress that, that India has is great. So we love that. We I'm love trying that to get my brother-in-law to house hack there. He's, he lives in downtown yeah. India and he's been uh following along a little bit. I'm like, man, you need to, you know, buy a small multifamily house hack it, live for free. You're in a great market. Like get in. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I mean, he, he's absolutely. on the verge though. He's, he's getting pre-approved and making the step. Right on. I mean, now is a better time than ever to, to borrow debt. I'm trying to go into as much debt as I possibly can right now, man. So cheap. Yeah. It's awesome. I, I love that you say that too. Like somebody with so many units and like has that perspective and has done that many deals. It's like, I want debt right now. I want to be, <clears throat> I want to be very leveraged, maybe not over leveraged, but you want to have a healthy amount of leverage because it's so cheap. Like, <laughs> I mean, as, as the, as the inflation goes up over time and everything like that, like that debt is staying the same. So in like adjusted inflation dollars, you're going to be making money over time with how cheap debt is. So that's, that's really good. Man. Yeah. One of the best profit centers of, of real estate, man, is using other people's money and that hedge against inflation because you could lock in the same rate for 30 years. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar is going down in value every single day. So your $1,000 mortgage payment today, imagine in making a $1,000 mortgage payment in 10 years from now, it's going to be like if you were making like a $300 mortgage payment on property today, right? So yeah. um, whereas like you, crazy, could, man. you won't be able to buy Apple stock if you like take out a $100,000 mortgage for it and, and t- yeah. So I love real estate, man. It's so good. But uh, yeah, Tim, with that, let's transition to the last section of the show here. We're getting uh, low on time. So let's get into the Fortune Five. These are the uh, same five questions I ask every guest every week. So let's jump right into it. Fortune Five. What is the biggest thing that has contributed to your success so far? I will say I got to give credit to all the people 
that I um, hung out with while I was in the military, man. And, and kind of like, I think the military will make you or break you um, period. Right. So if, if you've been able to stick, you know, through more than one or two enlistments or commissions in the military, there you're, you're, you're having certain qualities and characteristics embedded into your DNA that you may not realize, but that transition very well in business. So I have to just attest to all my fellow officers and chiefs. And then, you know, when I got into the senior ranks, the, you know, my brothers and sisters in the chiefs mess, like all the people that went before me and taught me and essentially made me who I am as I transitioned out into the business world. Um, I, I have to say, man, I, I don't think it, if I didn't join the military and learn what I did and, and went through what I went through and I, I really don't think I am, I'd be where I am today. So I have to say, man, it's probably because of my military service and, and my leaders that had went before me and kind of helped me sh- help shape me into who I am today, man. Awesome answer. Awesome answer. I love it. Um, second, I, I don't have anything to add to that. That's a good answer. Second question. What's your biggest mistake so far? It's turned into a learning lesson. Probably, um, we thought it was a massive mistake. We, you know, we were pretty, we were pretty freaked out about the fact that the first apartment complex that we did, uh, about a year into it, we ended up firing the property manager that we hired um, because they just didn't do what they said they were going to do. And and they weren't qualified to do what they said they were going to do. And we should have known better. Um, we didn't have too many options in that market, um, but it was a huge lesson learned. And, and that was just to give you a little bit of context, you know, it was a single family property management team. They had a bunch of single family units. Um, And they're like, we're looking to scale up to multifamily and like, cool is perfect. We'll get a reduction in our, in our fees because they don't have any experience, but they're good. They're legit, you know, but then like, you know, six months into it, we realized like, they're not really actually changing their behavior away from the residential, you know, property management. There's a lot of differences when you're managing a, a one single family home or a whole neighborhood of single family homes versus, you know, a B minus class apartment community in a tertiary market. So like there's, there's a lot of differences. And so they weren't willing to really adapt and change. And then we finally back and forth, we're like, all right, man, we got to let you go. And, but luckily we had a relationship with the economic development office in the city and she happened to be an agent. She happened to be a property manager and she loved us and we got to know her really well. And she ended up taking over and, and she was brilliant. Um, so probably just, you know, the property managers, you guys, you know, the, the property managers that you ended up working with, again, it should be a long-term partnership and you should be ethically aligned and morally aligned, but they are, they're the face of your, of your asset, man. They are like the face of, of your, of your, of your property. And they are directly responsible, truly like for the financial health of that asset too. So yeah, don't be, part. you know, don't undermine, um, the importance of interviewing and screening the property managers and putting extra time into screening the property managers and putting extra time and effort into into screening multiple property managers to find the right one. So that was a huge mistake, but I mean, it ended up being great. Like we, like I said, we just sold that, that asset and gave all of our investors triple digit returns. And uh, we're super happy, man, with that, but that was a huge mistake. I mean, um, that we definitely lost a lot of money and um, is that, that probably that one the property management team that we had to fire. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I think uh, property management can make or break your investment. So that's a really good tip. Um, third question here, Tim, what's your favorite book you would recommend to someone starting out? <clears throat> Man, I, I have to give at least one, one real estate book and then one mindset book. Um, and for any of those who have, if you're in the military or not, just the book military house hacking guys, it's free on our website. You could download it. I'll give you a lot of ideas. If you are in the military, if you haven't used your VA loan, even if you have so many strategies in that, it's free download, check it out. Um, but I would say the real estate book that probably was the most pivotal uh, pivotal for me was the ABCs of real estate by, by Ken McElroy, man. Um, he's a rich dad, real estate advisor, and he just completely simplified how to analyze and, and, um, yeah. and, and run numbers and really how to interpret a large commercial multifamily deal. And I'm like, what is this easy? And so then that was pivotal for me. And that was the real estate book. Um, but then if you are listening to this and you haven't read to or listened to how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, you have to get that book. That should be, that should be a required reading 
uh, for anybody in business and in investing in the Nate, in the military, right. Especially the officers, uh, um, very simple concepts, but how to win friends, um, and influence people. Cause guys, it's, it's all about how you network with people, how you get along with people, how you build relationships yeah. with people. And so if that's just one of the primary things that you learn about and learn how to communicate and learn how to respect, learn how to praise in public, you know, just learn how to be interested in other people and understand what their goals are and care more about them. Um, you're going to win, you know, in, in whatever game you're playing. So read that book. It's a lot of great tips um, in that book. It's like, literally like a freaking, it's like a, freaking get a booklet to success it's crazy <laughs> yeah it's good um, really good book. yeah it's an awesome read book it for sure read that that's good man so outside of growing this awesome beard for the first time what do you like to do outside of real estate second time actually it's the second beard you had to shave it yeah. yeah 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 so um i can't really live without music dude I've, I've been playing music all my life i've been playing drums all my life uh we actually uh have a gig um coming up um and we play all over pensacola the panhandle orange beach gulf shores foley um we play all over the area and and we love traveling my wife and i we travel the world um even this during this this 2020 crazy 2020 year we had, we went all over the place and we're, we're really taking advantage of that before we have before we have kiddos um but we're about to start having kids man that's one of the big reasons why i separated from the navy because we're about to start having babies and i actually want to be there when they're when they're born and i want to hang out with them i don't want to be on a deployment so yeah that's awesome man super excited for you guys i'm gonna have to come try to uh watch you play one of these times and we actually you guys jam out we were asked last summer we were asked to play in panama city beach at the salty dog over there but we just couldn't it was like literally the weekend before that um like we were asked and we're like dude no like it's four or five grown men that have families and the schedules and all this crazy stuff. Um, so we couldn't, but yeah, I mean, we've been asked to play out there. We just haven't played out there uh, into that, you know, that part of the panhandle, but dude, yeah, maybe. Love it. Well, last question here. Where can people find out more about you and connect with you? Yeah. I mean, if you're listening to this, you could definitely, I'm pretty active on Instagram at the Timothy Kelly. And then I'm probably most active on LinkedIn at the Timothy Kelly uh, don't sleep on LinkedIn, man. It's, LinkedIn is very, very LinkedIn powerful. Is powerful, man. Building those professional, man, for sure. Uh, and then I'm all over Facebook, mostly in in the the Facebook group for the military, um, for the active duty passive income, the military real estate investing community. Um, active duty passive income is you know a free Facebook group you can get into. Um, but then, I mean, if you you could also go to the timothykelly.com, just all the shenanigans I'm involved in are there, all the podcasts that I've been on, a um, bunch of stuff. But if you're listening to this, man, just, just shoot me a text. And if you have any questions, we can hop on a call, whatever. You can just shoot me a text at 847 910 9161. Just let me know you heard me on this podcast, man. And then we'll hop on a we'll hop on a quick phone call. I love it, man. Yeah, I don't know if you'll get bombarded as much as being on bigger pockets, but maybe as it grows in like a couple of years, it'll just start <laughs> it'll start just yeah. getting calls from like, hey, I heard this podcast. Come at me, come at me, bro. Let's go. I'm ready. I wanna I love it. Everybody, please go call Tim. Rewind it, get his number. <laughs> yeah. um, well, Tim, this is awesome, man. Thank you for coming on tonight. Love uh, love your mindset and your approach to the real estate game and you know, giving value back and helping others. Um, you know, get their start and achieve like that, that same financial freedom goal, which we're all after. So really appreciate yeah. the time. And it's been an awesome show. Bro, anytime, man, it was a pleasure. Um, look forward to the next one. Let's do a part two soon. Yeah, let's do it. All right. With that, we're out of here. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like the show, if you found value in it, please go to iTunes and leave a rating and review. And if you want to check out more on your multifamily journey, go to multifamilyjourney.com where you can get free resources to start your journey figure out your path. That's multifamilyjourney.com. But more importantly, go take action today towards your financial future. See you next time.